Hey everybody, this is Paul. Welcome back to another lesson in cryptography. In this video, we're going to be talking about modular arithmetic. Modular arithmetic is a very fundamental component of cryptography. So it's very important that we understand what modular arithmetic is and how to use it before we ever start learning about cryptography. Here I have a statement. And what the statement says is it says 3 is congruent to 5 mod 2. So essentially what that's saying is in the world of mod 2, 3 and 5 are equivalently the same thing. So how exactly does that work? Well, let's look at this number line right here. We'll go ahead and place 3 on this number line. So there's a 3, and now we'll go ahead and place 5. And so now we have the numbers 3 and 5 on our number line. But 3 and 5 are two distinct numbers here. However, we're dealing with mod 2 in this case. So the 2 here in mod 2 tells us how many values we can have in mod 2. That means there's only two values in mod 2. So for every mod, the value starts at 0 and it ends at one number less than the mod. So one number less than 2 is 1. So for mod 2, the acceptable values are 0 and 1. If we were dealing with mod 3, we would have three values to work with, starting at 0, then 1, and going up to 2. 0, 1, and 2. Three values in mod 3. 0 and 1 gives us two values for mod 2. If we wanted to take this further, we could take a look at mod 9, and the acceptable values for mod 9 would be 0 all the way up to 8, giving us 9 numbers. So I think you guys can see the pattern here. The mod number tells us how many values we have in our mod, and the highest number of the mod is always one less than the mod itself. So 3 goes up to 2, 2 goes up to 1, 9 goes up to 8. So how do we apply these values to our number line here? Well, we start at the 0, and for the moment we'll look at mod 2. So the possible values we can have for mod 2 are the numbers 0 and 1. So we start at 0, and then the next number would be 1. So then we would want to put a 2, but 2 isn't one of the acceptable values, so we switch back to the beginning. So this becomes 0, 1, 0, 1. So 3 has the value 1, in mod 2. And 5 also has the value 1 in mod 2 as well. So therefore, 3 and 5 essentially have the same value when we're dealing with mod 2. We can also apply this to negative numbers as well. So following this pattern, negative 1 would have the value of 1 in mod 2, negative 2 would have the value of 0 in mod 2, and negative 3 has the value of 1 in mod 2. So in mod 2, negative 3 is congruent to positive 3 and negative 3 is congruent to 5 because both negative 3, 3, and 5 correspond to the number 1 when we're dealing in mod 2. Let's take a look at this with mod 3 now. So when we want to plot the numbers for mod 3, we're going to use the same approach that we used when we plotted the numbers for mod 2. So 0 always maps to 0, and then we start counting up in mod 3. So 1 is 1, 2 is 2, and then we would want to do 3 next, but when we're dealing with mod 3, our only possible values are 0, 1, and 2. So since we've already got to 2 here, we start over at 0 again. So 4 becomes 1, and 5 becomes 2. So we just create this pattern all the way across the number line. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, and it just keeps repeating. So therefore, all of the integers on the real number line will map to 0, 1, or 2 when we're dealing with mod 3. We can also take this in the negative direction as well. So going backwards now, starting at the other end, 2, 1, 1, 0. So negative 3 is congruent to 0 in mod 3, and positive 3 is congruent to 0 in mod 3. Notice how I went backwards here in the negative direction, but if we read this left to right again, we continue the same pattern. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, and it just keeps repeating. If we're looking at 3 and 5 in mod 3, 3 and 5 are not congruent. 3 is congruent to 0, and 5 is congruent to 2. So therefore, we would say 3 is not congruent to 5 when we're dealing with mod 3. But we can say 3 is congruent to 0 in mod 3, and we can say that 5 is congruent to 2 in mod 3. So this is probably a good stopping point for now for an introduction to modular arithmetic. In the next videos, I'll be covering how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide with modular arithmetic as well. So stay tuned for those videos. Thank you guys for watching. Have an excellent day. And if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe.